I'm going to show you how to get to the Dynasty Mausoleum. There are actually three ways to get there. Two that people know about and one that I don't know if anybody even knows about other than me. I'm sure there are people out there who figured it out. Um, so the first two are the pretty standard ways. an early game way and a late game way. Then there's a way that you can get there at any time using an exploit. It just takes a while. So it's only really worth it if you want to do it to skip Godric or not get a great room. You have some reason you want to spend like 20, 30 minutes getting there without anything. All you'll need, be, all you'll need for the third one is a flying exploit, which we'll get to last. The main two ways to get to the Dynasty Mausoleum is through a quest, and one is through a sending gate. So the quest will be after you defeat Godric, but the only reason to defeat Godric is because you need a great rune. And in order to get a great rune, you'll have to either defeat Godric, or you will have to defeat uh, Radon. So, great runes. Godric's great rune, Radon's great rune, or you could get... That's, that, that's it, actually. You have to get Godric's or Radon's. Uh, well, maybe you can beat the, the lady at the, at the academy. I, I, I don't know. Either way, Godric or Radon, they're sim the simple ones. After you get a, a great rune, this guy right here at the first step, he's not here for me on this game, but he'll be right here. He'll tell you to go to the Table of Lost Grace. You don't have to talk to him, though. You can just go to the Table of the Lost Grace after getting the rune. Don't even talk to the guy. You don't even have to. Go to here, and then after you get a, a great rune, you'll head over here to the west, the west gate, and there'll be this character here. You'll talk to her one time and she'll tell you a bunch of stuff. Then you need to make your way over to Lake Liurnia. There's a church right here. Nearest fast travel is going to be Fallen Ruins of the Lake. At this point, there'll be an NPC right here at the church over at Lake Liurnia. And he will give you some bloody fingers. You'll use those bloody fingers at multiplayer. They'll be here instead of the bloody finger. They'll be these consumable ones. And you'll turn multiplayer on. If you don't have multiplayer on, you can go to system and then over to network and perform matchmaking, enable play online, turn all that stuff on. And then the easiest place to find duels, at least when I made this video, would be to go back to the first step and put down your summoning sign, your invasion sign there. Invade three people. You don't even have to fight them. You can just jump off the map if you want or just immediately cancel the session. And after three of those, then you come back to this guy and he'll advance the quest. Just pick the top option every time with this guy, no matter what he says. Then he'll give you a cloth. There are two ways to get the cloth covered in blood. You have to get the cloth covered in blood. One is that there's a church way up here that's really a pain in the butt to get to because you have to get past the Madness Tower and stuff. If you want to get past the Madness Tower, it's a line of sight so you can hide in a bush and it won't make you go mad, stuff like that. You can slowly work your way through, sneak through, sneak through and get up to there. There's an invader there, but you can just ignore him and run past him and go talk, like interact with a body in the, in the church and it'll soak in the blood. The other way is to go to the four belfries over here. There's a chest at the very top tower. Then you go to the tower over here furthest to the east. Use that key that you get on one of the, on the sending gate right there. And then that will take you back over to the very beginning of the game where you can fight Grafted Scion again. You defeat Grafted Scion and head back to that church that you start the game in. There's a corpse in that church. Interact with it. It'll cover the cloth in blood. Then you go back to this guy and give him that. Then you're done. He'll give you the um, Pure Blood Knight's Medal, which you can just use. Your person will use it, and then it will teleport you over into the Dynasty Mausoleum, right in front of the Dynasty Mausoleum entrance, Site of Grace. So that is the early game way to get there. Whether you know, whether you don't know, that's the early game way. Now, the late game way is after you go through the entire city and you get up into the snow area. Once you've gone to the snow area, you can find your way over to Castle Soul. There's a nightmarishly difficult boss to fight right here at Castle Soul Rooftop. There's actually a way to cheese him. I don't know. I might have it linked in the description of this video with a crap ton of other random links I throw down there for other videos I've made for Elden Ring. Uh, you can just shoot arrows at him and just kill him without him fighting back. Afterwards, you'll go to the top of this tower and there will be half of the Secret Howling Tree Medallion. Then you'll also go over to here. This is Village of the Alban Urks, which is actually below what we're looking at, like underneath of this. You'll follow a, a rock wall. Just follow the wall. Like you can't, you know, you're, there's a wall, right? Cliff. Uh, you'll go to the east, follow that. Eventually, you'll run into a guy who's disguised as a jar. Just bump into him or roll into him. He'll turn normal, talk to you. He will give you the other half of the medallion. And then from there, you go back to the Grand Lift of Rold. And then when you get there, you can... Uh, there's a way to swap what medallion you're going to use. And you're going to then use the secret one, which will let you go through a hidden path and come out here in the hidden path to the Hallig Tree. Then you can go all the way over here. I highly recommend getting the inner consecrated snowfield first. And you'll go over to somewhere around here. And there's a sending gate that'll take you to Dynasty Mausoleum. 
But on the way, you'll fight an NPC invader that has Reduvia Blood Blades, which is really annoying. So be prepared to beat that if you want to get to the Dynasty Mausoleum. That's the late game way. That'll pop you out. Not even at Palace Approach Ledge. It'll pop you out like somewhere over here. And you have to sneak your way, get your way through here over to the Palace Approach Ledge. And then go on through the Dynasty Mausoleum. So that is the late game way. That is how you are supposed to get there late game. Now there's a third way. Now I don't know if people know about this one. I was playing around and I found this one using the flying exploit. Now if you don't know how to use the flying exploit, it's pretty simple. So you're, it's, I don't know, it's also a pain in the butt. So you have to be able to start system, go over to here, quit game, and hit yes. You'd be able to do that insanely fast because what you need to do is sprint with your horse, jump off your horse, and then quit to main menu like that. If you can quit to the main menu before you hit the ground, it will decouple you from your horse. And if you get decoupled from your horse, then there's something else you can do in order to fly. But if I hit, head back into the game now, you'll see that I have decoupled from the horse. So because of this, there's actually a way that we can get to that sending gate before even fighting Godric. So now I'm off of the horse. So how do we fly because of this? Well, what we'll have to do is we'll have to find what's called a death plane. Usually a ledge that once you fall far enough down, it just kills you no matter what. It doesn't even matter how far you drop. It's just one of those ones that has a death plane next to it. You'll find them along where I'm looking right now. Find them all along here. You find them all over the place with death planes. So we'll get to that one in just a second. You'll also need to go to Fort Ferris because there's a medallion there in order to get up the Grand Lift of Dactus, unless you want to fight the Magma Worm, which we're talking about a way to do this at any point in the game. So go to Fort Ferris. You can do that fast by going to the Dragon Burnt Ruins. There's two underground places here. One of them has a chest that you open and it'll teleport you over to the Celia Crystal Tunnel. You'll go from the Celia Crystal Tunnel to the Celia Town of Sorcery. And then from the Celia Town of Sorcery, there's a bunch of fires that you have to light and there's one way up on top of a building up in like a big tower and if you go into that one it'll open the gate you can go all the way up through here get up here jump on some flying thing thing that shoots you up in the air get over here to fort ferreth okay go into fort ferreth and you'll go up through the place climb up a ladder as soon as you find yourself climb up a big ladder at the top of it you go forward there'll be a chest at the end you get half of the deck of this medallion there the other half's at Fort Height West. You'll just have to run here from first steps or whatever. Go in here. You'll run up. You'll go up some stairs. You'll see some, like, soldier guy. That's how you know you're in the right area. Just ignore him. Just run off to the right at that point, and you'll go up to another tower. Climb that tower. There'll be a chest at the top with the other half of the Dactus medallion. Then you can go up the Grand Lift of Dactus. And then there are two ways to approach the next point. One that is a little more consistent, and one that is risky if you're not going to fly exploit. The best way to do it is to go to the Windmill Heights, although there is a boss here, but you can go to either Windmill Village, Windmill Heights, whatever, because then you're, you'll be, uh, be able to have a grace that's relatively nearby to what we need to do, but also right next to a bunch of death planes. So earlier I showed you how to decouple from the horse. I just did it. Didn't want you to have to wait for me to do it. You jump off the horse while sprinting and quit to main menu before you hit the ground. Now you're decoupled from the horse. So what you do after that is you go and you look for a death plane, which I'm not in a good spot for a death plane right now, but let me go further up into the windmill village and find one. You'll want to find a ledge sort of like this. This is not ideal. It might be a little tricky for me to pull this one off. Uh, right here is the exact spot I'm at right now. So you want one of these ones that goes to a t like a triangle like that, and you don't want it facing too much down or else it'll slip you off. So you're going to try to line up perfectly with the tip of the diamond shape or triangle shape. And you're gonna look straight down. You're gonna slowly inch your way to the edge. And if the, if the ledge is correct, you'll be able to slowly creep your way till your right foot is off like that. Now we don't wanna go all the way off or else we'll fall off after we do this. We may still fall off depending on the ledge. We'll see if this one's good enough. So we're going to keep playing with this until we get our right foot, mm, just a teeny bit more maybe, like that. Where it looks like our heel is just perfectly flush with the edge. Then you're going to quit to the main menu and you're going to come back in and you're going to hope that your horse does not shove you off. Because when you come back in, the horse will respawn with you. So now I'm loading back in and we'll see if that ledge was good enough or not. And it was, and there goes the horse and the horse died. Now at this point, most of you will be able to do the flying exploit. Sometimes save files just don't let you do it. Don't know why. I had one that was like that, couldn't do it. And one, all the rest of mine can't. I don't know what causes it. So... Now what you'll do is you'll go to summon. Now if it's grayed out and it acts like you're underground or you can't summon for some reason, 
then that save file is just screwed and unfortunately you can't fly and exploit. Don't know what causes that. But for the rest of us, you'll now summon the horse and it will use a flask. Now the horse does that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to run off the ledge while summoning the horse and it will just do that. Now you're flying. Don't jump. If you jump and you don't hit the ground normally, then you'll just die. You'll get hung in there and die. You can jump if you want if you're going to land on ground. Otherwise, it screws you up. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to the highest point of this area because we need a lot of height. You can go up, but you can't go down. So you're going to go over here and you're going to try to touch the highest point possible, which is this. I actually wonder if I can go up the windmill. No, I can't. Okay. Uh, so now that we touched the highest point, we're as high as we can go. Now what we want to do is we want to go over around this wall, and then we're going to want to go past where the Draconic Tree Sentinel was, and then we're going to follow this wall, and then follow along here, try to get over to the Forbidden Lands, and down here it sinks down a little bit. We'll be able to reconnect onto the ledge here, and then find our way up into the Grand Lift of Rolled. So, uh, yeah, let me just maybe speed up the process times a billion, or you get the idea. You want to head over towards this and get around this corner. So once you've made it around this ledge right here, you'll look at this. That's where the D Draconic Tree Sentinel is. So what you're going to want to do is go around this ledge, but it's very important that you don't get close to this ledge. There's a death plane all around ledges like these. If you get too close to the death plane, um, if you go below it far enough, you won't touch it. But if you're cl about this level, we'll be close enough to it that we'll touch it. And if we touch it, one of two things will happen. We will want three things. We will either get our camera flipped upside down permanently until we die, or we'll just die, or we'll have we'll flip our camera upside down and then we'll die. So you're gonna want to stay away from the ledge. Give yourselves at least like a hundred feet of room or fifty feet of room, or whatever this is. And we're just trying to sneak around until like we get over here. Then we're gonna run up to this wall and then we're gonna follow along that bridge and then stay away from the death plane over there and try to reconnect over on that ledge. Actually, maybe it'll just cut straight across, actually, but it may not load incorrectly and not be solid. But I guess now's the time to test because uh, I should be the guinea pig so you guys don't have to. That's kind of my job. We're going to head towards the skull at the height we're at because I need to hit the ground over there. And if we do, if it does let us go on there and it'd be solid when we go this route, then we're going to go up the ledge where my head's looking. We're going to go up into the grand lift of roll. There's going to be a boss that spawns, and we're going to just run right past it. So I made it over to the ledge with the flying exploit. Now I have to head up to the grand lift of rolled. Up here will be a giant flying eagle statue boss, but generally you can just run right past on the left or the right side of it, although there's probably a chance he can hit you with a ranged attack. I've never had it happen, but I've only run past him like eight times in my entire playthroughs of Elden Ring, but you could if you wanted stare at him just to see if he throws a ranged attack. But generally he won't. He'll just jump and swing and then stand there like a doofus. And then you'll run past to the Grand Lift of Rolled. Now you could grab the Side of Grace there, but if you do, you'll have to do the Flying Exploit again because you'll probably beat the tar out of you real fast and that'll be the end of that. So anyway, you're going to head over here and then you are going to head over to here. Now if you need to do the Flying Exploit again, you can get off your horse and then stand on the edge of this ledge to, ledge to resummon the horse. But either way, once you're in the Flying Exploit back here, you're going to head over to this ledge and it'll let you just go straight up. Now you have two choices on what to do next. So from this point, there's an easy way and an, well, harder and easier depending on what's going on. So the simple way is to run around this room and look for points that let you go up a little bit higher and a little bit higher and a little bit higher. You'll just keep running around until you find stuff that will let you inch your way up bit by bit like this and just stay inside of this room. And once you get really high, you'll try to stay over on this side of the room so that um, so that if you die, it'll put you where you want to go. There's a specific place you would want to go. The other way is to get a little bit of more height like this. You actually don't fully need the height. And then go over here to get out of this door. If you got too much height, which I just got too much height showing you that, I think, uh, there's a way to reduce my height by going over to this and then going down like this until I can get out of the room. Now, the easy way is the way you're going to want to do it generally, or you'll have to watch this video down to a T and be really patient and play pause and do it yourself, because I'm going to show you a way that's way faster. So if you go in there, it's going to take you 
I don't know, five minutes all the way to 20 minutes to find w find your way up inch by inch by inch till you get high enough. You go high enough, you'll hit a death plane, and if you're on the other side of the room when you hit that death plane, it'll put you uh, at a uh, stake of Marika. Always go to the stake of Marika, no matter what. We're trying to get to a stake of Marika. Do not respawn side of Grace. But the other way that's really fast, if you know what you're doing, is to go out here, go up that guy's back, and then go over to this, get up to here, go up here, go up like this, and then go over to here. Now, you could jump up there if you if you feel risky, up to that one or wherever. But if you don't feel risky, there's really no point unless you're in an absolute hurry. You can just go all the way to the back side, go up like this, go up here. Now what you need to do is go over to here. We're gonna need a little bit more height. So we're gonna go up to here. And then we need a little bit more height on top of that. So we're gonna go all the way over to here. Grab around this corner. When you see this little crevice back here, you know you're in the right spot. You can go up like that. Now we're high enough. Now we want to head back. This will allow us to get out of the map. And then, well, further out of the map, I guess I should say. But uh, this will allow us to get inside of the map. And then from there, there are a few areas we can use to get up really high, really fast. So you go in through here, and on the right side, you're going to slip through this crack. And now we are on the outside of the Grand Lift of Rold, but inside of the world. So kind of run inside this weird wall thing so you can see where you're going. You're going to want to run past this first one. This one can't be climbed. And then once you get around this, you're going to go back into this wall, and you'll be able to see the thing that we want to climb, which is this one. Now at this point, depending on what how you came in, you won't have enough height. So you're going to come up here, and then you're going to turn around and come back on the invisible part like that. That will get you enough height to where you can go over here now and then slip up right there. Now you can go on the right side and you can just run up this thing until you get up to the top. Now you're going to wing out like this and go all the way around and you're going to come over to this next one which will let you go up on the right side. Do that till you hit the top and then go run over here. Now I picked a bad time to do this because it's nighttime, but you're going to try to go south over to this ledge. Get up a little bit higher right here, and then run back through this invisible part. Then there's a part right here you can go up. Gonna go up this. Now the tricky part, which is finding weird invisible things along this ledge to climb to get a little bit higher, because we need some more height even still. There's actually a secret spot we want to get to up in here that will be perfect for what we want to do. So if you go over here, maybe I can get up over here. Maybe I can get on the inside of this. There we go. I found another one up. Okay, we're getting closer. Now we want to get up this one, which I'm not sure. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. All right, we got up that one. We got some more height. Now we can go over to here, and this is where we want to be. Good luck doing exactly what I just did. Although if you watch the video enough times and go slow, maybe you'll be able to get it. Or you can find your own route. The Really, the trick is just getting really, really high and being on the northwest side of here, whatever this is. What is this? Yeah, north side, northwest side, north, northwest. And then just dying. So right here, what I can do is I can run into this and keep jumping, trying to get off with the button to dis uh, dismount. And sooner or later, I'll jump off and fall down to my death. But when you die, absolutely spawn at the Stake of Marika, like I said a minute ago. Stake of Marika always. If it takes you to the wrong one, that's fine because you it's the only way to do it. So sooner or later, you get high enough, you do this, it'll take you to the right one. So you do that, and it'll pop you out here. Now, I know this seems crazy, but at this point, what's even crazy anymore? I mean, I was flying through a mountain, so I mean, is it really that crazy that I'm over here at this point? So now I'm at the secret hallowed tree place I mentioned earlier in the video where you need that medallion from the castle soul rooftop. This is the late game way to get here. So we have done this early game. Well, my character is late game, but I could have done this at level one, you know, not fighting a single enemy. So we're going to go up through here now. And it, these guys are super strong. If you're here at level one with no armor, if they actually hit you, they will just one-shot you with pretty much anything. So, good luck getting through there. If you die, you can go to the Stake of Marika, though. Then you can activate that grace, and now you're home free. You can always teleport here whenever you would like. So now, out here is the Consecrated Snowfield. Now, there are two options. I have to run in order to open my map. I'm still in combat. There are two options I can show you once I can open the map. There we go. So, just like earlier, you could get the inner Consecrated Snowfield side of grace and run over to that sending gate that we need fight an invader which if you're level one with no armor or weapons it's going to be a nightmare and good luck doing that now you could do that 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a way to use the flying exploit to see if I can skip it. If not, then I can't. I'm going to do that real fast and then continue the video. All right, so I got some bad news. I tried using the flying exploit. The second I landed at the sanding gate, it just had the invader come in. So instead, you're going to have to cheese the invader if you, or you just beat him, you know. But I'm going to show you a way you can cheese him really easy. So we're going to go to this merchant over here. This guy's in the Weeping Peninsula. Uh, I should probably grab the side of Grace so I can tell you what the side of Grace is, what the name of this thing is. But most of you will know where this is. It's pretty early game. So we got the uh, Nomadic Merchant at Castle Morn Rampart. So you'll go to this guy. If you don't have any runes, you'll have to go grab some runes from something, from a graveyard or something, pop some golden runes. There's graveyards all over the place. There's one right over here somewhere by Stormhill Shack. There's one over here by South Rhea Lucaria Gate. There's one up here by the Four Belfries. I mean, there's, they're all over the place. You can find one if, if you want to do it that way or just whatever way. Get some runes, sell some spitting stones, maybe whatever. You just need to buy some Kukris. So I'm going to buy 83 Kukris. Also, if you want, uh, you may, I don't even know. We're going to find out here in a second, but you may also need to get some serpent arrows from over here or something from this merchant. Uh, or maybe, well, that's really your only other option. And then get a bow from someone. Does this guy even sell a bow? I don't think he does. Uh, you can buy a bow from the Table of Lost Grace or from the, I think the Isolated Merchant Shack down here has one. No, no, it's not. There's a merchant down here. Uh, I can't show you right now because I'm on the character. It doesn't have the map. Anyway, we're going to head up to uh, where we were, and you'll definitely want to grab the map so you can see what you're doing and just go ahead and get the side of Grace while you're at it just because if you die, you want to be able to reset. But there's a spot we can go. We can abuse the AI in order to get free damage with the Kukris. You can only have 30 at a time, I just realized. So you're probably going to have to have Serpent Arrows then because the Kukris are not going to do enough bleed damage to take them out of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and put on a bow that I bought. Uh, and then the Serpent Arrows, which you can just buy. And then you'll probably want some backup arrows just in case. And now you're all ready. You can try to cheese them like this. So I am right on the edge of where the invader comes from. So I've already died to him once. He's over here. And I'm going to show you a way you should be able to cheese this. But any cheese with this guy is always going to be relatively dangerous. At least any that I found. There might be some like god tier way to perfect cheese him. and make it super easy. But what you're going to do is you're going to activate it. And then you're going to wait for him to spawn in. And you're going to try to lead him over to this over here. Uh, you'll have to wait for him to get near. Or else... He will just stare at you once you get up on it. So you want him to already be on you. So he'll try to chase and jump and stuff. Now, I uh, got the Kukri. We got the Serpent Arrows. I'm going to try this with the Serpent Arrows first. Although the Kukri is also nice. The Kukri is, you know, since you only have 30, it's not going to finish him. So you're going to need the Serpent Arrows anyway. But anyway, we're going to let him come over to us. And then what you're going to do is you're going to, once he gets running especially, you're going to get up onto this. And then he has to jump up onto this. And then you're just going to take shots at him as he runs up. And he dodges what he dodges, and what he doesn't dodge, he doesn't dodge. And then once he gets right up on you, you're going to drop off. And then, wow, I didn't mean to drop that far, but you're going to supposed to drop off and then go all the way back around. And get all the way back on. And then he'll chase you up there again. And you're going to keep on doing this and shooting at him until someday you'll eventually beat him. So just keep shooting arrows at him. And then ideally, you're going to drop and then come off to the right side. If he gets right on you, it's actually really scary because he can close the gap with those Reduvia Blood Blades. So, got to be careful. All right. Get more shots at him. If you miss, you miss. It's whatever. If he dodges, he dodges. And you're just going to keep doing this. I think it's better, in my opinion, if you're actually level 1 and have like 10 HP. It's better to play it safe than it is to uh, try to go fast because you could get almost done and then be trying to go too fast and then uh, totally regret it because you died. So definitely got to be careful. So going to head back around, jump up again. He made to jump up here, won't he? No, he didn't. He went for the full. I wonder if I can uh, know his pathing and then just get him to not dodge. Yeah, I think that works, actually. You could probably do that. I'm going to try that again. So I can actually jump up right here. I don't think he knows how to jump up. Okay, or he's... Oh, oh no, he's got the high ground, Anakin. All right, he's down on the ground again. I'm gonna run back up. No, he'll still dodge. But you could just aim it if you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this until he's dead. 
Well, that was miserable, but I got it first try on this, trying it on this place. So he drops sanguine gear, not really what we're here for. He's defeated. Now we can go where we wanted to go. So that, with all this exploit and everything of doing it this way, you still got to find a way to kill that guy. So that will kill that guy. Then you can head over here to the sending gate, which is right down there. And now it'll be activated. It will not activate until he's defeated. It is right here on the map. If you're looking at the Consecrate Snow Snowfields. And you'll go down to it. And you will activate it. It'll ask you travel to another location. You'll say yes. And now you will be at Dynasty Mausoleum. So that is the third way. Uh, on top of doing the exploit and all that. That is the third way that you're going to do it. It'll put you in the cave, you'll run out of the cave, and you're in that same spot from earlier. And here we are at Mogwin Palace Dynasty Mausoleum. That is the third way to get to this place. And those are the three ways to get to the Dynasty Mausoleum. Uh, so you have your exploit way that you can do anytime, even though it's kind of a crazy thing to do. I, I Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're already familiar with all those systems in the games in the game. Or if you just have some reason that you want to do it that way for some thing that you've decided you're going to do with the game, you know, some challenge, some something, you know, it's a, it's a fun thing to be able to do at least. Uh, the other ways are the standard ways, the early game, late game ways. Those are the three ways. I mean, I make this video for a long time. I get asked all the time, is there another way to get there? Can I get, how do I get there late? You know, I get asked all the time. So this will definitively clear it up. I can just link people to this when they ask. Now you know the three ways to get Dynasty Mausoleum, the exploit way, the early game way, and the late game way to get there so that you can fight Mog, the Lord of Blood.